As we spoke in the responsorial psalm, Lord, you will show us the way or the path of life. That's really what this is all about in the end. And this third Sunday of Easter, especially as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Uh, and I have to admit, as I was uh, reading over the readings in preparation for this homily, uh, I found myself moved really by all of them. Uh, I'll touch just a touch on each one. Uh, St. Peter, now this is the Peter that denied Jesus three times. And this is the Peter that really was struggling. But this is also the Peter that Jesus appeared to. And that changed everything. That changed everything. Footnoting for us, by the way, Jesus appears to us every day. Every day. Now, one of the apparitions is what we just experienced outside. That air conditioning that's wonderful out there, I mean, that's, that's, that's Jesus working. And we'll be grateful for that air conditioning in August, won't we? Definitely. So St. Peter in the Acts of the Apostles says, God raised this Jesus. Of us, of us, or of, of this, we are witnesses. Wow. The disciples were witnesses of Jesus and exalted him at the right hand, and he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and poured the Holy Spirit forth for you to see and hear. That's what we're praying for you, each of the candidates this morning, that the Holy Spirit will be poured upon you, and that the, the, the Spirit of the resurrection will come upon you, and trust, truly tr touch your lives and change your lives. So once again, we come back to, Lord, you will show us the path to life. So for each of us, those are powerful, really, words, because he's speaking about God's life, not the life of the world that the world has been proclaiming to us over every possible social media that they can throw at us. And I can tell you, uh, if I could throw my phone away, I would, but my staff would kill me. <laughs> so I can't do that. But to keep our eyes focused on the path that God has laid out for each of us. And it's often not what we think. And I just ask our couples out there and our families, how about it? Did things turn out exactly the way you were planning? That was a good groan. That's a good groan. Very good groan. Because it doesn't turn out that way. God does have a plan for us. And he's really uh, saying to us that just as the disciples had moments of suffering, yes, had moments of struggle, yes, and they also did not even know at times how God was working. They stepped out in faith because they had met Jesus. They'd met Jesus risen from the dead. And so much so that St. Peter writes us this wonderful letter. Uh, and he says this, Jesus was known before the foundation of the world. Wow! That Jesus actually is the word spoken that created the whole world, that created each and every one of us. But revealed for the final time for you, who through him, through Jesus, we believe in God. So Jesus is a pivotal person in this whole thing, as the Son of God especially. And he, our relationship with him needs to be one that's alive and that's living. That's partly why the sacrament of confirmation exists. It says we lay hands on you, both Father Tommy and I. We are invoking the Holy Spirit upon you, the spirit of Jesus risen from the dead. And God raised Jesus from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope 
are in God. So what St. Peter is saying is, we're not to have faith and hope in the stuff of the world. And so the stuff that we see on our iPads or our phones is not necessarily of God. And God's life is different. God's life is about love. Because that's how God created the world and that's how God created each of us. It's really out of love. We are all an expression of God's love. And boy, are we a diverse expression of God's love, aren't we? That was be humor, by the way, so if you didn't laugh, you need to. And then we come to the wonderful gospel, and uh, I know Father Tommy and I uh, really find this gospel speaking to us as ministers, but it's also saying to us, each of us, the disciples were, were so distraught, they were on their way to home, Emmaus, and they found themselves walking with Jesus, but they couldn't see him. And that is a huge moment right there, because it's the same thing that happens to us in life, that sometimes it's hard to see him. Sometimes it's hard to know what he's saying to us. Sometimes it's hard to recognize him in the event that's taking place, especially if it's suffering or difficulty or pain, whatever. But Jesus was walking with them, and we can trust that, that he's walking with us to show the path of life to God. That's what's happening for each of us. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what's going on in our families or our work, he's still walking with us. And as he was speaking uh, to the disciples who could not recognize him, he began to explain things to him. And God does the same thing to us. God explains things to us, especially as we are a people of prayer. And so let me pause there. And so this is your cue to have your holy cards. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you are praying for right now in this Mass are? Let's give them a hand. All those gifts are gifts to help us on our path to God. All those gifts. And they are gifts given to us so that we may see Jesus in our lives. And so the disciples in the gospel heard Jesus' words and their hearts were on fire. Their hearts were just filled with, with love, but they couldn't tell where it was coming from. You ever had that happen to you? Where you have just all of a sudden your heart is just full, full, and you don't quite know where it's coming from. Well, that's God. That's God speaking to us. That's God loving us. Um, when you first see your children born in your midst or you hold them for the first time, wow, right? Now, as they grow up, it can be, become, becomes wow-wee. <laughs> but God speaking to us in love. And so they were actually being taught the wisdom of God in the scriptures. And that's why it's so important for us to read the scriptures regularly, daily if possible, as families as possible, or as couples as possible, to let God's word be alive in us and to have our hearts just fired up by the love of God. And then to have the understanding of God the understanding that speaks to us about how God created the world, about how God has enabled us to have a path to him, God loving us in that way. And then to have the knowledge of God. And by the way, the stuff we get on our, and I know I'm hitting this hard, but it's there. The stuff we get on our cell phones and our, and our, our computers uh, best phrase I can do that I can say in church, it's bull punky. <laughs> the real truth is that God's love 
is speaking to us about God's way, God's path to life. That's what God's inviting us to in God's love. And then to have the counsel of God. And so that's why it's so important for us to be a people of prayer daily so that God can speak to us in our life moment. And God can say to us what we need to hear, and especially it opens us up to God's grace, God's love, just pouring over us to show us his way and to give us the path of life that we need. And then the gift of fortitude. Uh, that's the gift of strength. Strength in faith, strength in hope, and strength in love, because it's in through faith, hope, and love that God reveals his plan to us, God's path to us. So tomorrow, at work, or at your high school, speak faith, specifically. This Sunday I was confirmed! Imagine doing that in the hallway. Oh, I'd love it. Talk about rocking the school. Having said that, you can just simply tell your classmates, the love of God touched me this Sunday through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In confirmation, that will speak enough. I'll do the yodeling. Okay. And then the gift of piety, which is really one of the key parts of the path to life with God. Because piety really means we are people of prayer, we are people of the Word of God, and we are people of the Eucharist, especially, and the sacraments. And that we believe Jesus is giving us himself in the body, his body and blood. Jesus crucified for us, but Jesus especially risen from the dead. Think about it. As we receive the body of Christ, he is giving us himself, Jesus, soul, body and divinity, and he becomes one with us in that moment. Wow! I was restrained, by the way, on that. <laughs> And then the fear of the Lord. That we're in awe of God's wonder. That God spoke the name of Jesus from the beginning of time. And God created everything that's around us. And today God has made us. He loves us. In our diversity. With our foibles. But he loves us. And he's got a plan for us. And he's guiding us and leading us and shaping us. To each of the candidates, as we lay hands on you, as we anoint you with the holy oil of chrism, we are praying for you, that the Holy Spirit will descend upon you just like he did the disciples at Pentecost. This is your Pentecost today. I'll ask you now to please stand each of the candidates. Everyone else remains seated. <laughs>